Good evening. It's so good to be back. I see some new faces. So if the first time you're at Little Bit of Heaven, can you just raise your hand? We have a little gift for you. Yay. Well, we're glad you're back. You chose tonight. That's wonderful. You kind of have the bleacher seat over there. We sometimes say the people's seat there need to be practiced the, like king and queen wave. So thank you for joining us tonight. I was saying in the back we may be small in number, but the Lord is here. And uh, that makes it a majority, which is pretty cool. So we're so glad that you came tonight. Thank you for uh, driving over. Um, I always share the story behind Little Bit of Heaven Ministries when we open. I'm not going to go into the full length uh, testimony. Uh, first of all, because then I'll start coughing because I've been... I've been out for a few days, but it's great to be back. But just for the fact that a lot of times when somebody visits for the first time, not quite sure what we are, and we're actually a full-time ministry, and we've been here since 1994, going into our 21st year. It's amazing. And actually, the vision for A Little Bit of Heaven came from uh, watching the news one night. There was a young girl years ago. Her name was Katie Beers, and she had been kidnapped, and I was so overwhelmed by the evil of the story that I just cried out to God, you know, can't there, can there just be a place for good people? Because I couldn't even, I couldn't even comprehend that kind of evil. So in that moment, I just, you know, can't there just be a place for good people? And I actually heard two words, and the two words were, that's heaven. So I said, well, can't there be just a little bit of heaven on earth? So that is where the name came from. And for the next two years, I began to write out my vision. You know, if there was a little bit of heaven on earth, what kind of place would it be? So I started to picture kind of an oasis and a refuge from all our issues. We all go through different things. And I said, what if we could kind of create for the few hours that you're visiting just an atmosphere that would kind of give you a spiritual faith lift, that maybe just a recharge of hope and encouragement. You know, we all go through different things in our life, but maybe through music or through the teaching tonight or uh, different things things that we offer that people can grow in their faith and also make friends at the same time. I kind of had this vision of a, a cheers without beers, you know, kind of thing. Everybody knows your name. It just starts to come in. So, um, so anyway, with that, I just kind of uh, really thought it was not meant to be me. I just thought I was supposed to be writing the vision and then give it to someone who had the ability. That would be someone who had money, someone who had knowledge, and obviously someone who knew how to make coffee because I wanted to really keep it simple, have some really great desserts, and, and keep it simple with coffee. So as I shared the vision with a friend one night, she didn't see it the way I did, and she just looked at me and said, you know, this really sounds like God to me, because when you can, he can. So she said, you know, I want to challenge you. She said, bring all of this that you've written down, bring these pages of vision with you, and if it's, uh, and, and have people pray over it. And if it's the Lord's will, he'll do it in spite of you. And that just seemed so impossible to me at the time. I was a new believer. Everything was new for me. I knew we had nothing. And so on that list was tables, chairs, sound equipment, coffee makers, everything. And uh, the Lord provided all of that within weeks. And no one ever gave me money. It was like we literally found the items, whether they were in somebody's dumpster or they were um, in a garage sale on a Sunday night at the curb. It was just like this checklist. I'm like, oh, that's on the list. That's on the list. And we ended up opening on April 8th, 1994. Oh, I still can't believe that 1994. I mean, when was I married? Because I met my husband here. 98, I was married. 94, I was there. Okay, good. So um, he'd like to know that I can't remember which is which. So, um, But anyway, since that day, well over 100,000 guests. We stopped counting at 100,000 because we don't know. Uh, have visited from all over the world. And uh, we've had the privilege to meet people from Israel, Africa, Sweden, Norway, Scotland, Russia. We have a band coming from Russia next Saturday, so I hope you won't miss that. If they can come from Russia, we can certainly come from the Long Island area, right? That's how I feel. So we're glad you're here tonight. I'm excited. It's our Victorious Life Series. I'm going to open up in prayer, and then going to bring up Tanya. So, Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for this evening. Thank you for the peace that's here. Father, thank you for each person you brought here tonight. Lord, no accident, all a divine appointment. Bless them tonight through the worship and through the teaching. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So our Victorious Life series, we've been uh, having that for many, many years. And that's when we bring in different guest speakers and, and we want to fan the flame on the gifts that they have. You know, sometimes there are people that maybe are just preaching in their church or they have organizations, but sometimes we don't get that opportunity and that honor to see them. And uh, from the first time, I actually met Tanya first because uh, she or I got a little closer with her first because she had come to our open mic night and then started to come more and more so I knew her as the worshiper and as the singer then I started to know her as a prayer warrior then I started to know her as a fashionista <laughs> and it's like just follow you want to like clothing just follow her she's always like beautifully beautifully uh, put together so anyway one one particular night Jim actually spoke out loud for something they, someone on I, up on the altar asked him a question and he answered and his voice was so powerful that I just said you know you really should think about being in radio and he said well actually I am because I have my own radio show maybe I'll tell a little bit about that so uh, that was kind of cool then found out that uh, he's a minister and found out that he's a teacher and what I love is something Tanya wrote about him and she said my husband he'll preach the sin right off you <laughs> I thought that was great. So we're going to start out with worship. Would you please welcome Tanya and Emily? Praise the Lord, everyone. It's so good to be here with you. And I thank Samantha for just looking at the gifts that we have and having this place so that we can be used of God. And I just so appreciate her and appreciate a um, little bit of heaven. And I thank my um, daughter's um, maid of honor for being here, coming and bringing her friends. And for those who don't know me, mostly everybody here knows me. I'm a mom of six children, adult children, I want to say that, and they're, they're all out of the house now. So I'm in a really good place in my mind, you know. <laughs> I'm being put back together. My nerves are, you know, getting back together, and I, I feel relaxed now, and, and I'm just in a good place with the Lord. The first song that I want to sing is called Because of Who You Are, and it's such a, a, a blessing song because but you don't know me, but I just love the Lord so much, and when I sing, I get really, really serious, and my, my singing reflects my prayer life, and I try to put everything that I am into my music so that what God gives me, I try to give it to you. And the reason why this song is so special is because I just love God for who he is. You know, he's blessed me so in my life. He's given me six children. Um, he's given me cars. He's given me houses. He, he's given me so many blessings in my life, spiritually, financially, every which way. But even though I'm appreciative of all of those things that God gave me, I just love him just because of who he is for no other reason. So if I get blessings, I love him. If I don't, I love him. I just love him because he's just wonderful and I understand who he is. And so because of who you are, Lord. Hallelujah. I love you so much, God. You spoke the words and all the worlds came into order. You waved your hands and planets filled the empty skies. You placed the woman and the man inside the God.
you Jesus praise the name of the Lord I just love him I just love him from the depths of my heart and I'm not ashamed to say that I love him I'm so serious about my relationship with the Lord and all I think about every day is just sharing the gospel with other people all day long when I go out I, I take my little pamphlets that I wrote my testimony and I just walk up to people. I'm getting even more bolder now. And I just walk up to them and I just go, oh, here, this is a story of my life. And they go, oh, thank you. And they don't even know what's in it. And I, I just make excuses to talk to people. I just talk to everybody. Like, you know, my kids, they're like, oh, mom, mom, you got to speak to everybody you meet in the elevator everywhere. And I'm like, yes, I'm on a mission for the Lord because I love him. Because I love him and I want everybody else to feel that love too. I don't want to keep it to myself. We live in a world that's dying out there, that's in turmoil. And the answer to all of that is not programs, the government is not, you know, marching, you know, all the people marching and everybody's trying to do something and protest. It's letting people know the love of Christ. That will change the world. But it starts with us, and it starts with our love for the Lord. So my next song is a beautiful song, I Love the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you. Oh, God. I just love you so much. You've been there for me.
praise you, Lord. We worship you, God, because you're a great God and you watch over us and you love us and you have mercy. And we know when we're in trouble, we can go to your throne. We can throw ourselves at the altar because we know you will be there to lift us up, to put us under your wings and to love us like a father does. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand.